Good evening, everyone. I am Rick, one of the moderators of r slash Clash of Clans. Joined tonight by Spencer, Sam, and a new guy for you, Noob. Uh, one of our newer moderators is going to be testing out his uh, his voice tonight. Sam, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm trying to stay awake as, you know, um, 2 a.m. in the morning, but I think I just about have the willpower to make it through an hour of this. Uh, so hopefully that'll go all right. Spencer, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm actually very excited to talk about what we have planned. Um, I pulled out all my concepts, my old ones, out of storage. I'm excited to look at those again. Very excited um, to revisit them indeed. How are you doing, noob? Doing quite good. I'm uh, playing some cookie clicker in the meantime. Been, uh, good what? Time. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I have a cookie clicker tab open right now. Oh my god! All right, yeah, let's just let's just half-ass this one. That's 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 what we do. Yeah. Um, is uh is noob cool? I've never actually spoken to you. Um, really? at least yes, recently you have. is is <laughs> uh yeah that that was the lost episode. So uh, is noob uh, how how you would like to be addressed forevermore? Um, well, not not a reflection on my skills, but you can just call me noob. All right, that that works. Well, talking about skills then, should we talk about the big elephant in the room, which is the lovely meta of Tower 15? Um, now, I don't know about you guys' personal experiences with it. Uh, well, maybe I do after watching both of you one star yesterday. Yeah, that was quite that was quite enjoyable. Uh, you I'm did too. That, yeah, I'm part of it. But I think, <laughs> we, I think we can all agree that we're all struggling with Tower 15. Uh, so, Rick, what what armies are you using right now? What how are you trying to beat beat the defensive meta? Uh, speaking of one stars, I just uh, I just dropped a fat forty six percent one star Ooh, in, in CWL like two hours ago Ooh. Ooh. with a with a super archer blimp to Ooh, into, no. into titans. That's pretty much the only thing I'm I'm somewhat competent at at Town Hall fifteen, and uh, like the worst part is too is uh, that we had. Uh, we had the layout that I was going to attack. So I did probably 20 FCs on it and they started out pretty rough, but eventually we got to, we got to a spot where I was getting, you know, high percentage nineties and, and three stars fairly consistently. Uh, and then, then uh, I, yeah, I, I, I go to go live and like a Tesla pops up right where it wasn't in, <laughs> in all my practices. Yeah. So I had, I had to drop an extra loon to set, to set the funnel. And then the rest, the second part of that plan was to drop a bunch of loons without the blimp and the warden, because they were going to go into a bomb tower and and trigger the poison, and it worked consistently fine in all my friendly challenges. But because I had to drop an extra loon to get a defense down on the outside, I, my loons didn't have enough oomph to get inside and trigger the poison, and just it was there's no there's no coming back from that. So I dropped. I was like, maybe I can invis them perfectly, and I couldn't. And then all my super archers died to the poison, and I scrambled to try and make something better yeah. in a 46% one star. I expect you're very lucky that you can't spectate CWL attacks from the friends list. I know. Yeah, and this I, is, I, I, <laughs> yeah, this was this like our clan has been really hammering down. Like, we, we cannot one star. We, we ended up getting second place in Champs 1 CWL last month. And that was yeah. despite a stupid amount of one stars. Like all month, we've been really hammering. Like you can't one star, you can't one star. And then I basically opened this war with a disgusting one star. Not not even like a, not even a high percent one star, a forty six percent one star on a base on a base that we had that I practiced on like twenty times. Yeah, I've got my first CWL in Champs three ever this this month. So I think I am going to really let my clan down. Sorry to anyone in my clan listening. I I hope to do well, but my God, Tower Fifty is hard. Spencer, how are you finding it? Honestly, it is discouraging me from attacking. I feel like an absolute noob with all these Mr. Uh, with the monolith a day. What's that? Yeah, one attack a day. That's yeah. all I can whip out because oh, it's. I attack and I just want to log off because it's so hard. I really need to sit down and take the time to learn all the new stuff. Mm. I actually don't know what Town Hall Noob is. Noob, do you care to share? I, oh, yeah. I, sorry about that. I'm a Town Hall 11. Sadly, I'm a bit lower than uh, some of you guys, apparently. 
by a lot. What are you running for CDBL and like what kind of bases are you, are you hitting? Uh, really, I well, when, when I used to do a lot of CWO, I used to use a uh, I I used to use one of Judo's it's dragon attack strategies where um, I think it's called Zap Dragon, something around that. Zap out the uh, Zap out an earthquake, the air defenses go in with dragons, really tears out the base for uh, general 11. Gosh, this is, that is giving me Tamil 10 <laughs> flashbacks. Yeah, well, Tamil 10. Yeah. Tamil 10, Tamil so, 11. so what, what is the meta kind of like down Tamil 11? Because I think we're kind of me, Rick, Spencer, quite a few of the mods and quite a lot of people probably on this sub are in an almost isolated bubble of Tower 15 ness and in a, to an extent I guess so is Supercell. You know, you rarely get balance changes or much changes at all to lower town halls. So what is the current method like at Tower 11? Is it mostly spam? If so, what kind of spam? Is it still witches? Are dragons more used? What's happening down there? Surprisingly, uh, I don't see a lot of E dragons in my uh, in my what's it called my 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 clan. War logs. <laughs> I mean, no, <laughs> no, in my uh, defense logs, I, I I get a lot of I get a lot of mismatch. Let me, I'm open up my logs right now. I, yeah, I, I saw I get I get I I just got super witches, but I get I'm getting a lot of dragons and pickers. Dragons and pickers seem to be. Uh, big meta down here. Dragons and Pekkas, as in in an army together. It's I well, it's either it's either like a, a mix or mostly dragons and some balloons. That that's or or you just have those guys that just go in with whatever. But mostly, it's dragons and balloons with the occasional witch and golem. <laughs> ten, on, ten on nine vibes over there, but. So, maybe moving back to Tower 15, Rick, have you found the Monolith or the Spell Towers the most annoying part to attack, and why? Which uh, one I, have you found more frustrating? I mean, there are obviously the aspects of Town Hall 15 that, that differentiate it from 14 and, and make it more difficult. I don't, I don't know if I'd call that annoying, um, but I mean, I don't want to pick apart your choice of words, because I think we're, we're talking about the same thing. But yeah, uh, it's it's really those two because we're still not seeing a whole lot of Town Hall 15s that are fully upgraded yet. Anyway, um, the new me. Um, like up- upgraded bomb towers are a hassle for for blimp stuff. Oh yeah, the, definitely. Um, but yeah, the monolith and the spell towers are it. Something I've been wondering about too is any of you guys use burnt base? No, nope. no, I almost I never really used to use it before, but I haven't even looked at it for Town Hall 15. I canceled my subscription when Town Hall when I saw Town Hall 15 was coming because I was like, okay, it's gonna be useless for for a while anyway until there's a good amount of videos. Uh, up, yeah. uh, I, I guess I should back up and explain what Burnt Base is just in case anyone doesn't know. But Burnt Base is is a site you pay a subscription. Uh, the the baseline subscription is only like three or four bucks a month, and you basically take a screenshot of a base and upload it to their bot on Discord or through their website, and then it has a catalog of YouTube videos and it will link you directly to a time, a time stamped part of someone three starring that base. And a lot of, a lot of times just with the prevalence of base links out there, you'll get 10, 15, sometimes 20 different videos of different armies, three starring it. I just knew that with 15 coming, it was going to be useless for a while until there's a higher volume of those videos out there. But the more I'm thinking about it, uh, I was I'd obviously been using it as a crutch, so I, I do want to get away from that. And with the spell towers, I don't know how well it's going to tell it apart too, because you can change the spell tower without changing the layout of base, and it's going to drastically affect those attacks. Right? I assume if if you watch a video of someone dropping a blizzard right next to a poison tower or a blizzard right next to a rage tower, it's not really that big of a deal. But if you change that to a to a poison that burn base video is now probably useless so yeah i do but, wonder if that w- would be less of an issue almost as time goes on because realistically i think everyone has come to the conclusion that rage towers are arguably the worst i think they do definitely have a place but i think when presented with the option most people are running invis and poison towers 
or just poison towers. So I think in the future, or even now, most spaces will probably be configured similar to spell towers in the sense that burn base uh, you know, attack uh, strategies that they find won't be too impacted. I mean, obviously, if you look at attacks from whenever Tower 15 released, everyone rocking Rage Towers, yeah, that will affect the results. But as everyone gets their Spell Towers upgraded, more videos come out, I do wonder whether that will be too big of an issue. Dude, we should talk to the Burnt Base guy on We should on, on episode one time. I, I, I bet he'd be down for it. Just about how Town Hall 15 is a lot more difficult. Didn't we just spend the last year at least asking for this? I mean, yeah, we did. There was Tower 14, I think, was full of complaints about spam, dragon spam, all the dragons, every single dragon that could exist. And now we've got a harder town hall. No one seems like it. Well, okay, no one seems like it. That's that's not true. But you definitely hear a lot of people complain about not being able to triple. So essentially, Spencer... The way we spent entire Town Hall 14 complaining about how it was quote unquote too easy and we needed a harder town hall. Now we've got one, no one can triple. So, what are your thoughts on that? Were we being, uh, so yeah, a bit I, might have a, I might have a more controversial opinion. I think that a casual player can no longer play this game, in my opinion, Af- especially after Town Hall 13, 14, 15. As you go on, it gets harder and harder, and you actually have to sit down and put time into learning these attacks. And so mm-hmm. casual players, like a lot of people in my clan, they can't attack, and they're not willing to put the time into learn attacks because they're more casual, you know? Uh, so I, I'm guessing that there's going to be a lot of players either leaving the game once they get to higher town halls, or they're just fine with being bad, and they're just going to one-star all the time, like what well, I see in my clan. I'm going to play devil, devil's advocate here. I'm not saying I actually disagree with you as such, but isn't Clash of Clans a strategy game and shouldn't people be possibly rewarded for actually having to think about attacks, plan attacks, have good strategies? And that po- possibly casual players shouldn't deserve the three star all the time because simply they're not putting in the same same effort, the same work that more dedicated players are. Oh, definitely. I think it's healthy for the game to go in this direction to make it um, harder and harder as you go on. But if you take a look back maybe five, six years, everyone was three starring and building an army and learning how to use certain parts of an army. It was it was easy to understand and uh, know how everything works. Now you have to sit down, watch some YouTube videos. At least I do. I don't know about you guys, but I have to watch YouTube videos if I want to learn an attack and I have to practice and practice if I want to perfect it. Wait, yeah, did you say five, six years ago everyone was three starring? <laughs> oh, like, yeah. like five, six years ago, Town Hall 10 was max and Town Hall 10 was impossible. Oh, like yeah. Town Hall 7 and below, I'm saying, basically. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I miss I those days I, when there was a I, dragon. I didn't, play, in the I didn't play in the first year, maybe year and a half of Clash. So I don't know what Town Hall 7 was like originally, but I know when I picked it up mid 2013, uh, Town Hall 7 was already like just dragons and like you zap out in air defense and mm-hmm. then it's yeah it's it's over and then town hall 8 started to take a little bit of skill with some hogs because there was still giant bomb damage and stuff and town hall, town hall 9 was uh, i say it all the time town hall 9 is probably the most balanced any town hall will ever be back then and the town hall 10 was impossible like if someone's getting consistent three stars at town hall 10 you knew they were cheating the change is also pretty big like you said the lower town halls you're just spamming and you're using these lightnings for your dragons. And then all of a sudden you you can't do that anymore. You have Inferno Towers, you have a Giga Tesla, Giga Inferno. It's just a huge change that a lot of players don't make it through, I think. Yeah, there's the top couple town halls. I don't think you've ever really been able to the pure spam your way to two to a three star. Right now you can you know, at Town Hall 11, Zap Witch is, is huge. And Town Hall 12, it's it's pretty decent. Uh, 13, I don't I don't war on my 13 very much. I don't know if with everything that's changed with 15 coming out, 13 is probably going to go that way soon. 
But Town Hall 14 never had a pure spam army that worked very consistently, and Town Hall 15 doesn't. There's mass witches. Um, if you zap out, a, a lot of value can work. But it's not a one size fits all kind of spam thing, and I don't think, I don't think the top levels of Clash have ever really had that, which is which is a good thing. But yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it's definitely like a divider between, you know, when you have to switch from spamming stuff to being a little more serious. I was going to say, anyone who makes it to Tower Fifteen, I think, has to reasonably expect that they should be putting in some effort into their attacks. I mean, you can take it like any game when if you have any sort of rank system or progression, you naturally assume the higher you get, the better you should get, essentially. And weirdly, I do kind of wonder that I do know people who are perfectly content with spamming whatever the town hall is and are seemingly absolutely have no motivation to get a three star in lots of situations. Personally, I really do not see um, why or how anyone could have that sort of attitude and why you wouldn't want to learn to be better. But I feel like it's fair, it's not really an issue not having a good spam trash at Tower 15 because anyone who's making it to Tower 15 reasonably should have months, years in the game. They should at least be thinking about trying some new attacks. So... Really, I'm not too upset with the Tower 15 meta, and I get like one triple a day in Legends, maybe, and maybe two, and that actually doesn't really bother me because it means when I get a triple, that triple is so much more rewarding in a sense. And I, I know there is an issue of people being turned away or demotivated if they're not getting fairly consistent triples, but equally, I think there is some sort of fun if you can get people accustomed to the fact that they won't always be tripling then getting a triple just adds a bit more excitement i i I do kind of wonder like we did kind of ask for this so we've had town hall 15 for a couple months now we're we're staring the next update in the face and i wonder if supercell is just of that mindset of just like hey this is what you guys wanted so okay like now that you have a taste of it okay we'll go back to normal and at, through the life of Town Hall 15, you know, there's going to be balance changes. I'm expecting a lot of balance changes in the coming update. I don't, I don't know um, if, if, there are, if there are any coming or not yet. It is the first big update since Town Hall 15, so it's reasonable to expect balance changes. And there's going to be new levels of troops and offense and um, changes to the defense stuff. So it should, I, I do imagine the balance of power shifts back towards offense mm. a little more. But I don't know, like, I'm, I, don't, I don't hate it right now. It is neither. It's it's challenging. Three stars definitely feel really rewarding when you get them now. Absolutely, noob. So you're down. So, you're down. You're all the way down there at Town Hall. <laughs> and you know, I, I I've been thinking of something while you guys were talking about how it, like different Town Hall levels, different fight. I've been I was thinking of an idea. All right, that you 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 could go you you can uh go back. Say you're a Town Hall 15 as you guys are. And uh, you, you max out a town hall 14. You can go back to that town hall 14 and join matchmaking as a town hall 14 with a town hall 14 army, all of that instead of having multiple accounts. That would be cool, but I would also be so mad at all the time I spent farming up my other accounts. <laughs> I, yeah, I totally understand that one. But um, yeah, multiple accounts. yeah it, no, it, it would be cool because uh, that's the reason I have all my other low alt accounts. I have one account at almost every level. I no longer have a 14 and I don't think I ever will again, but yeah, it, it is. There, there's a lot of nostalgia involved in looking at those old paths. I still enjoy attacking my 11. I just did a town hall 12 event uh, where I wasn't totally embarrassed at least. So that's fun. Uh, oh. I, my 13 is mainly a donation account, but you know, I, I, I do enjoy the meta down at those levels and especially because it's kind of really easy and you can just like I spend five versus fives and I don't really think about it and it's easy to get a 15 star war but it, it, it is fun to do those kind of attacks like I don't even know the last time I cooked a giant yet, but the town hall six I, I do all the time as an 11 thinking about spam do you think you're at like a transition point or you know what does it seem like to, to you to where 
where are you drawing that line between spamming and having success and when you think you need to start developing skills more? Really, I think the the peak of my spam was probably in Town Hall 9, just hogs. And I think really starting Town Hall 10, it was a little less spam and more um, more focus on the spells and playing uh, troop, better troop placement, knowing where to put a dragon or an archer. So it was Town Hall 11, though. You, you do have a lot of spam, though, with the dragons, you could say. But also with spells and, like, other troops, for example, a wizard or an archer, perhaps a little bit more of that tacticalness, a little more uh, having to be prepared. So I'd say at Town Hall 11, it's where you, you start becoming a grown-up. Like, uh, you, you, start, you, you start getting more, a, a little bit more complex in attacks. So I, I don't see that much spam. Have you started learning hybrid yet? Uh, no. Uh, do, do that. Do that. Yeah, for, hold on. That like, will hold, carry for, you. Yeah, like we, we didn't really ask you, but what are your what are your hero levels? Oh, let me pull it up right now. Don't... I'm gonna straight demod you if you tell me something disgusting right now. I, t- I took yeah. your advice. Okay, let's see. Been yeah, Spen- on my... Spencer deserves some shit as well. I mean, he didn't have max hero what? levels at tower fourteen, so my uh, heroes I are will... max now. I think they are. Are they? Are they really? Should yeah. we go check that? Yeah, I just dropped <laughs> five hundred dollars to max them. Oh, oh my god, god. I believe it too. <laughs> that, that's the yeah, sad no, part. Is like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't Did you know see my you comment? Know. Got like got... a thousand up to, upvotes. There's there's yeah. this new post on the subreddit that says, "What's your biggest regret in Clash of Clans?" And I said, "Spending over six thousand dollars." And it's the top comment on that post. Yeah, that's so, a regret. I mean, it's a regret. Yeah, Reddit's oh, a place like... that like really takes pride in being free to play. Okay, like, so right, I gotta. Like, just I the gotta... fact that you had to look up your hero levels is making me afraid. Uh, I don't got a lot, I don't got a lot in the back of my head. Uh, let's see here. 40, 40 queen. Uh, 36 king. I've been lacking on my warden, leveling up to two. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, how long, how long like, have you been telling 11 for? If you like, say longer uh, than a week, I'm gonna. <laughs> how long? I uh, like about like a month, like a month, right? Now. Uh, okay, oh, gosh. all right. Uh, okay. Uh, look, okay. look, look, I've been, I've been focusing on, on, on lab and some, and some buildings. All right, hear me out. Here. Okay. I got my right. camps upgraded. We're going to have to teach you a hybrid because hybrid is going to carry you through right. Town Hall 11, through Town Hall 12, through Town Hall 13. And if you get really, really good at hybrid, probably Town Hall 14. But All right. the hybrid, hybrid gets really complicated. At, uh, well, the, the, the concepts are the same, but it gets a little more difficult to execute at 14, and you have to really start choosing your bases better you got to give me the recipe man ah, uh know. yeah yeah we will we will do that um probably some other time but <laughs> uh anyway i guess the bigger topic for the night that we're gonna switch into is there was a really interesting post two posts really over the last month somebody's idea for the builder base revamp mm-hmm. and i know spencer okay. has had spencer's had a lot of ideas about how to fix builder base over the years um, yep. And now, like in the last couple of months, we've been hearing a little more details. I, I, I guess the only detail we really have so far, even us um, in, the, in the creator program who have NDAs, the only detail we've heard is that one versus one at the same time versus battles are, are going away. Mm-hmm. So, Spencer, I'll, I'll let you lead the, the, the next half of this since you're the passionate one about fixing build. Oh, rate. gosh. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to defend versus battles just a little bit. Looking back at the announcement of versus battles, head-to-head combat, you know, you have to make an army on the spot depending on the base. That is such an incredible idea. I I love that idea. Now, the execution of that was, we could say it wasn't the best. Uh, the biggest flaw with versus battles, in my opinion, is the armies. Um, we don't have like spell like stuff in build the race. We ha- we ha- we're limited with the number of stuff we should e- we we can use, and uh, I think that that cost it for a lot of people. A lot of people don't like it because of that. Uh, but versus battles alone in my opinion, is amazing. I think they should just tweak that system. So I was kind of 
sad to hear that they're removing that entire system for something brand new that we haven't seen before. Yeah, you know what, Spencer? I will back you up here. I don't think versus battles was the problem with build a base. I think that you it needed something to differentiate it from the home village. And I do think versus battles is a novel kind of way to approach that. On the contrary, I do think it's not implemented in the best way. For example, you know, it uh, means you have to wait around Fossey for many minutes, waiting for your opponent to finish. That's not great, though so that yeah. does seem to be something they will address in some form, possibly. I mean, obviously, removing versus battles does that entirely. Uh, also, the fact that the versus battles means that you don't necessarily have to actually be consistently good. You just have to be better occasionally. You, know, you For example, you could get a 20% one star and technically still beat your opponent, where, whereas in your next attack, you get an 80% two star and still lose. So I think that variability hurt it slightly. But then I don't think that was the biggest issue either. I, I do completely agree. I think the armies were way too, are way too restrictive. If there were new builder based content consistently, I don't think that would be a problem. Because, you know, for the last however many years, you know, when did Builder Hall 9 come out? And it's been yeah, three years yeah, at least. Yeah, three years. Yeah. 2019. So now you have a lot of people like me. And like I've been build, Max Builder Hall 9 for two and a half years. And now I just, I hold back my builder trophies purposely so I can have easier climbing games challenges. So if, if, if I'm matching someone who's new to the game, they have no, absolutely no shot at me. Like even with my, like I, I put out a progress base, I separated stuff out to where like I have all my air targeting defenses in a corner, all my ground targeting defenses in, in another corner, all my other junk, like my traps are walled off in a, in the, in, in the last corner. So if you look at my base, it's in, it's a very easy three star, but like I have max troops on everything, and I'm I'm playing like builder hall sixes and sevens, so there's no possible <laughs> way there's no possible way you're gonna beat me on time. So yeah. like I, I always try and quit early, but um, th- there's also like the largest complaint about builder base that I was seeing at least on Reddit is just waiting waiting for your opponent to finish. Oh. Yeah, yeah um that actually wasn't really a problem for me ever like if i saw someone was still attacking me i would either watch the attack and see how they were doing or i would go to home village check it out or, or just do something else remove some obstacles or something you know that was never a huge issue for me but i could see why a lot of people didn't like it i mean it was... i think it all really stems from the fact that people just didn't really like build a base and wanted to get it over as quick as possible yeah 100 yeah, percent and another thing, I think this might be controversial. I think a lot of people just hate things just to hate things. Um, when the Builder Base was announced, the way they teased it and everything, I thought that was brilliant. And oh, the final God, reveal, what? I thought that was awesome. But I just uh, feel like people like, hate it just to hate it, you know? Okay, well, no, no hold on. Let me, I loved it all. I'm going to walk back my my my, <laughs> my outraged expression because it, it, was, it was really cool and it was super hyped up. And it was, it was fun. It yeah. was like six weeks. It was a whole storyline where they're like, "What happened Builder to the builders left? left? What happened to the builders?" builders. And then, yeah. like in in game, the builders were replaced by giants for a week, and then they were replaced by witches, witches for another yeah. week. And there was all this cool stuff. And it was the the builder on a boat, and like, where's he going? And it was mm-hmm. a whole huge event. And then it was hyped up so much, and builder base kind of fell flat immediately. I mean, so the was... final reveal of a brand new base on the other side of the ocean. I I thought that was so cool. Yeah. A second it, base. Now I have two bases instead of one. It, I just thought that was awesome. So yeah, it, it it was hyped up really well, and the the lead up to it was cool, and and it did get us all excited. And then th- three weeks into builder base, you're like, I, I don't really care. Yeah, it didn't really have the sustainability. <laughs> it, to it, it. it didn't have. It didn't really have anything to to push for because it was. Yeah, there was no auto. Auto came with. Well, the only mind. thing to push for was the gear ups. I believe they there were three gear ups. Yeah, and, but then also people immediately knew the gear ups were garbage. Yeah, and they said keep an eye out for new gear ups in the future. And they said that in 2017, and we have never gotten a single <laughs> gear up since. Yeah. yeah, which like which makes sense too, because like obviously they have you know, the analytics to show that people must not have been spending much time on builder base or spending much money on builder base. 
it, it makes a lot of sense why we didn't really get more builder builder hall content they tried to salvage it with auto and builder hall nine and that probably worked like gangbusters for a little bit until we all got the six builder and then it just sat doing nothing for so long hear me out here i think the biggest issue with builder base and i think this is why it might be possibly almost doomed forever is the fact that it's just a side piece and that it can't be too big and too complicated and too much to do because then you start asking, okay, I've got to do double the stuff on top of legend text, war hits, you know, clan donations, doing everything, you know, clan games, clan capital hits. And on top of all of that, you've got this whole second base, which you have to dedicate almost an equal amount of time to. You know, that is unsustainable. And that is not what build base should be. Then equally, when it doesn't have much to do, people complain about... <laughs> You know, a lack of stuff to do. You, there is plenty of complaints about you, how you only really have quote unquote three attacks a day. But then, do people really want more? Like ge- genuine, genuinely asking, do you want to have to to have more things to do on top of everything? Well, I feel like everyone want just wanted more loot because there was the loot cap, and you could only get maybe three hundred thousand builder golden elixir every day from those attacks, and that's nothing. That's like a yeah. third, maybe even a fourth yeah, of an yeah, upgrade. You yeah. know. Yeah, that though. Yeah, so it's a li- very limiting fan. It takes that. That's why, like, I I I play Builder Base rarely because the the, the loot. I don't want to play for uh, what a, a, a week or two to get one battle machine upgrade and then not play for a for Builder Base for a while. It, it, they they should up the up the ante there or add a way to. Uh, there's so. You know, yeah, there's so much that's frustrating about Builder Base too, like that, especially especially upgrading your 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 uh, your hero, the last couple of levels too, oh, because yeah. you you really have to focus on one army on Builder Base, um, especially yeah. if you're grinding for auto, and then you put your uh, if you're doing a ground army like you know uh, barbs and cannon carts or giants and cannon carts, when you lose your battle machine, you go you go on a massive losing streak for a couple of days, and then you get them back and you have a winning streak. And then you put them down again, and you just had another massive losing streak. And it was just that up and down was so incredibly frustrating. And, and Rick, 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 you bring me on to another point where you say about the armies. I think I have a big, big problem I have army with armies and builder base. I feel like it's it, it's just a lot of spam with just one or two types of troops, be it witches, cannon carts, archers, sneaky archers, which it, it really makes the game boring. A lot, lot, lot more boring. Yeah, you, you either see one of two attacks. Uh, either the Giants cannon carts or um, Which the is in corner. drop ships and minions. And then you have yeah. those archer people. Also, what I what I want to recommend if anyone's out there listening and still working on auto is baby drags. All baby drags is, is a lot better. You don't have those battle machine swings. Um, when you're doing like barbs and carts or... The giants and cards, you really have to work in the the wall breakers, the bombers, uh, too. But if you do all all baby drags, it's kind of really consistent. You probably won't push as high, but you're not gonna have those that frustrating ups and downs. But also, the last time I pushed for auto was before raid medals existed. So like now, it really seems like using your raid medals to to finish auto is is the way to go. And that's one an, another thing I want to talk about auto. I think the introduction of the whole auto is what really sealed its fate for builder base. That was the biggest mistake they made. Um, what that really changed that that defines builder base now. Oh, why does it exist? Oh, because I could get my six builder. Now the entire builder base meta is all mostly rushed builder hall nines and they just do it for the auto, which is, is harmful for builder base, especially in the future, considering we're going to get this new stuff. Well, a majority of the community is rushed builder hall nines. And they just care for about it for the auto. They had a really good system of the first builder, five builder hall levels in 2017, and then builder hall six, seven, eight. Those were all great. It was consistent. And then nine, they they dropped auto on us, and that just defined builder race, and it still does to this day. You know. You, you know, Spencer, give me a good idea about because you're just saying how after once you reach six builder. Nothing to do, pretty much. You just left with a rush base. It yeah. that gives me, it because you, you say it's the only reason that defines builder base, which you're correct. 
So maybe if they if they add more defining features, like maybe I don't know, a beacon for sake, say increased increased uh, train speeds on home base or increased um, elixir mine pumps, uh, increased profits from there. That's if they if they add a system like that. I'd say oh, yeah. that, that can add some more there's, relevance. There's two main things that I think could fix builder base. Easy changes, in my opinion. Now, I could be wrong. I'm always wrong. But a, a lot of you guys might disagree with me, but they were really hitting the nail with those gear ups. Even though the gear ups didn't really change much of the defense, there's so much potential for future gear ups that, that it could really change up the whole base building um, meta. For example, one thing they limited was you could only gear up one cannon or one motor. Why not can we gear up all of them, all the archer towers, all the cannons, all the motors, and gear up future defenses, air defenses, um, eagle artillery. I made a, a post of four new gear ups. If all of those were introduced to the game and it was unlimited to how many we could gear up, theirs will be a the largest spike and boom in different bases in the home village and complexities to attacking which as we discussed for town hall 15 is, is healthy for the home village you know that's still back to the same problem you identified with with auto though is that if if the reason you're going to give us to play builder base is that it's going to help us do better in the home village i mean that's all auto was it was it was a little band-aid to say hey like go back to this grind that you don't enjoy just long enough to get a benefit in your home village and then we're all going to abandon it again. So I don't think the path to saving builder base is going to be th through more connection with the home village. Um, mm. Like cap capital is, uh, you know, people have differing opinions on capital, but I think overall clan capital is, is still fun. It's, it's still fresh. People do enjoy it. And there is absolutely no connection to the main village at all. Like but, you, aside outside of raid medals and, and stuff, you know, okay. But, you know, you're not obligated to do anything in the, in the capital to have an advantage in, in your home village. You, you you can get one through raid medals, but it it it's a lot more standalone and it's a lot more more separate. And I think that's a good thing. So yeah, that it, that's certainly one thing I kind of wanted to address. If you make too many things in the home village locked behind almost a a builder hall, almost like a say a builder hall paywall you are essentially forcing people to play a side thing because build base i think was always designed to be something you did while you waited for your troops to train you know it was never meant to be a whole second village that would you know rival the home village it was meant to be a side piece i think you have a real danger of integrating it too much with the home village because then it just forces people to play build base to have the same uh, abilities or features on the home village as other people. I think it's possibly quite dangerous for Supercell to make people play a whole separate game mode to help them on the main mode when really the se the second game mode should be a side piece. It shouldn't have too much influence on your main village. And you could certainly argue that uh, the Osso Hearts and the Six Builder is part of that whole thing if people are really restricted with their progress if they do not grind to get the auto heart and while i love having the six builder now i have it it's a pain in the ass for anyone who doesn't i mean having to play a base uh whole game mode which arguably a lot of people don't like to directly impact your home village experience i do agree is a big net negative so i think they should if they do want to improve build base they should really try to detach it from the home village because I think too close integration forces people to play something they don't want to play. And even if the new builder base, if, even if we all think it's excellent, there are going to be some people who don't like it. And I think it is unfair to make them play it just to advance the main village, which is really what everyone is there for at the end of the day. When they first introduced the home village, here, let me see if I can find the quote. It says... Do you mean build a base? I mean, yeah, sorry, <laughs> build a base. <laughs> it says, leverage your master builder's expertise to enhance your home village. And every interview that I've seen Darian do 
when he talked about home uh, home village and builder base he they always said oh it's got to connect the home village and now they've announced that they kind of want to make it a whole separate system which i think is good but i feel like to have it mean anything you got to have some stuff connected to home village you have to have something or else why not just call it clash of clans 2 and make another app oh yeah yeah i'm not pretending i know what the solution is but i think something akin to the raid middle system like rig setting clan capital would be a reasonable i guess starting point for steve cell i like look i'm saying down now i don't actually know the solution personally i can't think of a very credible solution to this but I do think something like Ray Medals, which obviously connects to the home village, but don't intrinsically link the two to make them you know, two peas in the same pod, I think that is the right step for Builder Base. Really? Well, I th- when I think of Builder Base, I kind of think of it as an off brand Clash of Clans. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, that's not a joke. Yes. Walmart <laughs> Clash of Clans. Honestly, if anything, I do like Clan Capital, but if anything, that is what Clan Capital looks like with the whole um, completely different art design. I mean, it does just so, look like it, one of those rip-offs you got, got off Google Play Store. So, no, no. there, there is a really good video essay on YouTube, and um, we'll, we'll add it. I'll have Spencer add it to the link, because I see you didn't do it yet, but it was the one, I, I know I sent it to at least uh, you, Sam, and you, Spencer. Yep. It was called Clan Capital is Doo Doo Garbage, a video essay. <laughs> and, um, it is 20 minutes long and it is 100% worth your time. The guy ended up being like a total jerk, but I think he's really spot on. And, and I won't repeat all his points because it's like a 20 minute video. Um, and it's definitely worth your time. It'll be in the show notes. His main overarching goal was that the failing of, of Clan Capital and also Builder Base was that it's the lack of complexity because we are so limited in our troop selections. We're limited in our base design because the it's, it's, it's much smaller and there's the modular walls, the, the five chunk walls. So supercell was obviously going for something that was a lot more simple is they've said a bunch of times, it's supposed to be a side game, it's supposed to be something you do, you know, like in between rating. It was something really small, but that's also it's, it's biggest failing is that it's just, it's not fun and the reason it's not fun is because it lacks com- complexity. Everything we enjoy about Clash of Clans is um, is that it's a strategy game, and we can do all sorts of different strategies. And any kind of base, there's especially low, at least lower town halls, there's two, three, four, five different styles of attacks that can clear that base. And as you get higher, it gets a little harder. But builder base, it's never really it. It's just the same couple layouts because base designing is much harder and much more limited mainly because of the walls and the size of the base oh, so and so then, continue oh, yeah it's I don't, it's just it's not complex and it's not fun because of that also uh continue continuing off from my uh, off-brand thing really i, I think the, the, the thing with builder base is it, it, the, the lack of a secondary thing a secondary um thing in attacking other than troops like i in in the um post for the reddit talks i know spencer listed something about the spirit suggestion suggestion somebody mm-hmm. made which I, I feel like it's a good idea because separated separated from spells make it less connected to builder bay i mean uh bay, main base i'm sorry and as you say with the walls i, I there's a yeah there's a lot less complexity with builder base which just leads to spam attacks one yeah. side so maybe maybe if if it falls i like I, I understand the modular idea maybe if they made it like instead of five wall sections three wall or two wall sections give space for a little a little more wiggle room give more freedom to the players because because it, it, it feels like um if you it feels like just a, a spam player stream right now builder base yeah Here's why I think spirits would be would add a complexity that even home village doesn't have. So home village has spells, um, and there's no restrictions to spells. You could place them anywhere, anywhere you want. Um, but spirits now, spirits are a spell, but you have to strategically get this spirit to make it to the location that you want it, uh, the spell to be. So you have to keep it alive, uh, basically, and it's from these posts it looks like spirit healths are going to be very low and 
um, it's going to require strategy to get the spirit where you want it to go without dying on its way there. So I feel like spirits would bring a complexity that builder base definitely needs. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, yeah. what you want is you want complexity because otherwise it is boring, as we kind of established with especially builder base, but sort of client capital. I think client capital hasn't quite fallen into the same demise that build builder base has. But you could argue they're definitely linked, like Rick was pointing out with that video essay. Uh, but yeah, I think that almost is a perfect idea in terms of getting complexity, but also something new. Because you want there to be a reason you have a second base, you have a different base. There, there has to be a reason. And it can't just be a slightly different defense. It can't just be a slightly different hero. I think it is very important that you have a completely different mechanic. And obviously you can argue, oh yeah, the fact you can swap your army at the start of attack, that's different. But <laughs> in terms of the actual attacking process, nothing is different. I, I completely agree that you know, something, at least something like that is the best way to take at least build a base attacking forwards and you know, give it give it a reason to be different essentially yeah well yes that that is like that's something clan capital cleared up cleared up a lot better the whole being different thing and really that that's that's the problem with builder base but builder base it, it feels kind of bland like i don't see myself in five years like when you when you like sitting down like i want to play some builder base to be fair which, i hope i'll start playing this bloody game in five years <laughs> you know uh, to be fair uh yeah well really i said that five years ago too and now i'm a stupid mod yeah I read it uh, and i like i went to finland like it dude it just gets worse from here on out man i'll see where i end up but 2027 20, i'll be <laughs> i'll what? be dead by then well yeah, we're I'll be free at least uh oh yeah 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 like Sam, if if you're doing this in five years, then you just go ahead and off me, okay? Oh, please do. It. We'll do. It. We'll you do it force together, me out. Then we'll make a video. I will. So so I I don't see I don't see us the mod team in five years <laughs> wanting wanting to do some big um, builder base. Let's get back together thing. Really? I, yeah. Someone said like, five years from now, the four of us will make uh, a podcast reviewing what we think of the new builder race. <laughs> builder base 4.0 yeah 2027 like clash, clash of clans second. would have to significantly grow but yeah one more thing i did want to talk about spencer one of your posts that i was i was looking through your profile from a long time ago <laughs> and you had a post about the flying machine oh yeah that's right um the flying machine so what i made in that post it's technically um, a toggle between heroes. So we already have a toggle between troops. You have to choose between, I think, 12 different troops. The flying machine, I'm uh, concepted to be you choose between the builder machine and the flying machine. And canonically, in the Clash universe, it actually works out very well because uh, the master builder did make the flying machine uh, for Clash Royale. This is a an existing thing already in Clash Royale. So if you look at the pinned comment, uh, one of the links in there says flying machine and builder base. That's my old concept from a year ago about why I think flying machine would be really well. Um, having a toggle between uh, two different heroes and they could even add more machines. Like I saw a concept of having Sparky, uh, which is another Clash Royale type machine. Sparky has another toggled hero. Um, what do you guys think? I think, I, I think the heroes Hero, the hero problem, I I feel like there's much there's much more bigger issues to be fixed before addressing on heroes. But if saying we get these new um, attacking update drops, new troop, new new spirits, I feel like yes, the um, cause it's sort of like switching over warden air to ground the flying machine. If these if these new heroes have a, a big big impact on your attack. Unlike bat, like battle machine, which is just meant to soak up hits, then I feel like that could be a major, major change. Rick, Sam, what do you think? Flying machine. Yeah, Flying machine. and <laughs> anything that's going to add to to complexity of the of the I hit is it. because so I like um I was talking earlier about how baby drags doesn't really suffer the same up and down swings 
winning and losing when you're down your battle machine. And that's largely because your your battle machine's useless in, in those kind of air hits anyway. You can use it to how I use it. I'm not a builder based expert, but you can use it to clean up some trash buildings on the outside and, and, and keep your keep your troops going into the middle of the base a little bit. But not having that isn't really a big deal when you're using an air hit mostly. <laughs> Yeah, so having my, yeah, yeah, like having having an air machine. hero would be would be real nice. Yeah, yeah I think my battle really... machine is um, exclusively used for scraping the fifty percent on my dropship min minion spam, which <laughs> basically isn't the best application for a hero, or at least the best design application for a hero. Uh, I, I think the battle machine really just suffers from not being particularly strong. Yeah, you know, if you look at heroes on the main base, queen. Can wipe out a large chunk of the base, especially if you give the right support, whether that be a golem, healers, whatever. Royal champion, king, even more than, even though obviously it's designed more as a support troop, they can all take and carry part of space. Whereas realistically, the battle machine can hardly survive destroying two buildings in some scenarios. I do think that's also an issue with the way build a base base design is. Because builder base, it sounds so silly saying builder base, base design, but the way it goes is that you cram essentially all the defenses into one big cluster of absolute nightmares and just try wreck everything. Because of how small builder base is, that and like I said, how um, unmodular the walls are. That is the solution. Cram everything together, and that really severely weakens the battle machine, as he simply can't survive just this big wave of damage. It's also why I, I expect none of you ever triple when you're actually against build hall nines, <laughs> because <laughs> there are, I, I genuinely, hand on heart, don't think I've tripled in about a year. Like I, 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 I could almost guarantee you I haven't tripled in a year on builder base. Simply you know, because I do not know how to triple a build a whole nine. <laughs> you, you know what? You, you just gave me an idea. You guys talking about all baby dragons or a mix of like spam of dropships. Hear me out on this idea. It's going to be a hot take. There's a limit on the same amount of troops you can have, you can bring in attack. Like, um, they do. I feel like that's even more restrictive. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. That is, that is <laughs> making it simpler again. I think we need to. <laughs> make sure we are making it more complex because that is the big thing of builder base it is too simple i think making <laughs> troops restricted is once again just making it too simple it's one reason why i didn't really like the whole groups you get in clan yeah, capital no, because it once again restricts what you can do <sighs> with an army and i think that's a really really big failing that was my biggest complaint when they first showed us Clan Capital uh, on the demo oh, yeah. for for a while. It's because, um, like everything that's a group now was worse and and more. Like I think barbs, uh, like you can do single barbs now, but originally that was a squad of the four barbs and, no. like minions was double size, loons was double size. It, it was it was terrible, uh, but at least they listened. But anyway, speaking of capital, our our last topic for the night is the official Clash of Clans Twitter. Uh, tweeted out a little teaser today. You guys, go for it because I'm gonna say look at now. yeah. So let's look at it. Um, it's a picture they posted on Twitter, and it looks to be the clan capital. And instead of district halls, they have the troop that you unlock at each one. Um, however, in a district that doesn't even exist, there is there looks to be a gravestone. Bum, bum, bum. I so, think, uh, well, thinking about that, I think it's just good. It's going to be a new district, obviously. But yeah. the theme there is, um, I don't know, skeletons, maybe? Because there are a lot of uh, skeleton troops in the Clash universe uh, that have that aren't already in the game. So I think it could I'm, be I'm, I'm feeling a uh, giant skeletons. Giant skeletons. Well, yeah, that's actually a really good um, thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, so they put battle rams in the clan capital already. And I don't know if you guys remember, but Battle Rams was a temporary troop we had in the home village. So I, we're never going to get Battle Rams again, I'm guessing, in the home village. And so I feel like if they add these temporary troops to the clan capital, like Giant Skeleton, we may never see it again as a temporary troop in the home village. 
Hmm. Mm. Well, I, I'm going to check this here as a little point discussion. We're obviously looking at Tombstone and thinking Skeleton immediately, right? But yes. what is one other rather spooky uh, gravestone steam troop? The Royal Ghost. So, And that is also, once again, seasonal troop. So is yep. there the chance we see the Royal Ghost in Clan Capital? And if we do, will that be completely disastrous? Yeah, that that would be good. I think it would be a good addition to Clan Capital, do actually. Why? Uh, just because who doesn't ghost. love the Royal Ghost? That, well, that will destroy thing. everything, you know. I, I feel like the Super Archer meta has already consumed the slowly placed troops yeah. and just take out part of the base. I don't know <laughs> if we particularly need a sub uh, another troop to occupy that space. But I'm yeah. certainly open to whatever they have. Do you think, I mean, we're obviously talking about new troops here, but do you think there could be a new spell with this district? Well, either they bring a, the skeleton spell from Home Village, which isn't very original, mm. but there is the graveyard spell, which already exists in Clash Royale. That could be an addition. We could see. I'm I'm not sure. So, uh, I have to say, is, isn't that just a slower... Uh... Excuse me if I'm wrong. Right. Isn't, isn't that just a slower skeleton spell? Yeah, it's it's basically a wider radius. It looks to be. That's yeah. about it. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I think their their kind of trend with clan capital uh, first spells at least has to make them sort of different at least. You know, for example, the rage lasts into the next attack. It's bigger. The jump spell you can get over. Actually, well, the jump spell's pretty similar, but the freeze spell that's or frost spell I think is on clan capital. Uh, that's obviously majorly reworks. I, I do hope that whatever we're getting in this district is a new, new thing, rather than an old troop well, or an old I feel spell like there's nothing rehash. else they can really go for. Um, it's getting harder and harder to come up with these ideas, especially for spells. Like when invis when the invisibility spell came out, that was that was stretching it. Recall spell, I thought, was actually pretty brilliant. I, I thought that was before. very good. I, I'm um, sad it doesn't get much use, but that's a yeah. whole that's a whole yeah. separate conversation. I'm not sure what they could add though. Is what I'm like, I've I've been playing a lot more Royale lately, ever since the World Finals, and like honestly, I'm kind of surprised the invisibility spell hasn't made its way into that game yet because you know, like, I, like I, there, I, there, there, there's a lot of cross modulation going on between the two games. Oh, there was yeah. a guy who played played that game over a year ago. I, I think the main problem with that is going to be. Now, people saying saying they could attack the troops while they're invisible. People can put like an archer queen, for example, um, use an invisibility spell on her, uh, destroy troops, go straight for the tower. And it, there's a lot of factors that can either make it a very balanced thing there, or uh, overpowered. Like if the enemy can see them or not. Yeah, that that's why they made the royal ghost in Clash Royale um, make its cloak. It's invisibility go away right when it um, begins an attack. Let's wrap it up. We've been going on for over an hour now. Um, we have, and I'm very tired. Topic. Yeah. Well, uh, well next... I would just want to thank everyone for tuning in. I want to thank Noob for his first podcast with us. He did. Eh, well, actually, well, I mean, second. No, oh, we don't. We don't talk about that. <laughs> we, we, we don't talk no, about that. Okay, first, okay, first, first, yeah. first, 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 that one we got to erase from the internet. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, don't look for it. Really is fun. what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We had quite a few listeners during the whole time. And thanks for the comments. We didn't see any questions, so we have no questions. But we're going to go on and wrap it up. And um, we will yeah. see you guys two weeks from now. Uh, which looks yeah, to next episode is going to be... Wow, 16th Friday. And um, we might be talking about an update if we get one. It might be before the 16th or it might be after. Or it might be even in January. We just know that there's an update on the horizon. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening. Thank you very Bye much. Bye, 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 everyone. Have, have a good one. <laughs>